Um, it's the first time for us that we're trying to bring such a, I would say, a very theoretical theory to something more, uh, I, mean, I mean, something that we could at least master a bit and understand. So my first question basically is going to be more on an his historical perspective, which I think is very important for me to understand, is I'm going to ask each one of you, why did you do why did you start doing research on topos? Because it seems a bit as a, <laughs> a research topic, which is not something that you would tackle in a master, I would say, degree, and find that this is the thing I have to do. So maybe I can start with Daniel and then go around here. So Daniel, why did you start doing research on topos? Uh, thank you. Uh, if I, I, I don't consider it is really a research on topos, except uh, for the last part. I would say a, a word on that. Uh, because I, I have heard about the topos, okay, and uh, I was very admirative uh, of the work in uh, SGR 4 and so on, but uh, I never thought okay, to apply topos. Okay. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, the problem was to define the form of information without uh, knowing nothing about uh, topos uh, precisely at this moment. Okay. And uh, it was almost evident that the equation of Shannon could have uh, an interpretation in a cohomology uh, somewhere, okay? and so I started to define uh, this, uh, this framework. Okay? So just to define a complex, as you like you show in your, in your slides, okay? except it's a bit more complicated. Okay? And uh, <coughs> the complex was almost correct, but uh, of course strange with respect to many things because of this uh, kind of indexing okay? that I have not really function that always there is a variable which play a special role. Okay? I put an index, but at this moment I don't, don't put an index. It was uh, with uh, another notation. And I realized that uh, he, 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 because I already called it was local, locality, this hypothesis. Uh, I worked on the question at the moment, but it was too quick. Okay? I named locality. Uh, and uh, I had this idea that it uh, perhaps it had to do with topos, and in fact, uh, by comparison, it was exactly, exactly that. Okay? That is to, to realize that there was a seat, okay? a site, okay? in this case, a trivial topology. But in fact, the fact that the refinement is a topology uh, is my idea. Okay? So after that, you have a much more uh, rich situation where you choose a specific. Um, uh, sieve and uh, filter and so on. Okay. But uh, it is this idea that uh, you don't try, as in ordinary topology, to define open set, but you define covering. Okay. So it is, it is this idea of refinement. Okay. And uh, so, and this sheaf and so on. Okay. So, uh, and after that, of course, I look uh, more carefully at what was uh, done, especially because uh, to compute uh, there was a suggestion in. Uh, 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 in the uh, SGR4 uh, uh, by spectral sequence and so on, but in this case, no, because it was not really a Czech cohomology. And, uh, but after that, uh, in the, so it is as I start, just I, I constated, I uh, realized that I were doing uh, a cohomology, computation of cohomology of a topos. Yes, so. so you were doing topos without knowing that you were doing topos? <laughs> Okay. Exactly that's how, that's how you exactly started. That's exactly <laughs> that. In a very particular case, of course. <laughs> and um, after that, it is uh, almost the contrary. That's because uh, with Bertos, uh, on this um, uh, extension of um, to try to define uh, uh, geometry for preparing uh, the. Uh, yeah, robotics and, and yeah. Here, uh, yes, I, I wanted to apply the principle coming from Topos, for example, the fact that. Uh, this um, uh, uh, intuitionist intuitionist logic okay, uh, is more uh, or contextual logic, uh, as it was done by informatician, for example, uh, is um, a, a good point in this case because you always prepare your action okay, uh, for generating several kind of action. Okay. So you have, to, uh, as you expose in your talk, okay, you have really different level okay, and localized at different places. Okay, of o o what is the choice which has to be made, okay, that you, you don't realize things. Okay. So they are, they are really suspended to new kind of information. Okay. So that was totally uh, aware that uh, the logic of Topos is doing that, okay, that I, I, I propose this, uh, this idea. And the fact that when we do the checksum, in fact, we don't manage to, uh, 
to um, control points. Yeah. You, you perhaps you will control some synergy at some moment, but it's even not evident, okay, like what we do. So it's better to have no point in some sense, but no, not necessarily to have point. If you have, it could be okay, but not necessarily. Yeah. So not success, no. Yeah. So that's okay. Jean-Claude, why did you start doing topos? Uh, or? Uh, I'm afraid that it doesn't apply to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I said that I'm afraid that it doesn't apply to me. <laughs> uh, he was forced to do topos. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, but I have to say that uh, the very few I've seen uh, looks very, very interesting, and I'm impressed by you guys because uh, it's... Uh, I mean, I know some mathematicians uh, who master a very narrow band... Uh, <laughs> very narrow band mathematics but uh, to to master all these uh, all this area i mean you have to master a lot of things uh, you have to be broadband and very deep so i'm very very impressed by you <laughs> so olivia uh, well i um, i got into contact with toposis when i was uh, still a master student actually uh, i had uh, read uh, things on my own and um, in fact, uh, the main, uh, my first motivation was to combine uh, logic and category theory, uh, which were my main interests at uh, the time, and of course also uh, nowadays. In fact, um, what has uh, always interested me the most uh, is uh, depth in mathematics and generality. So apparently the two are a bit uh, incompatible, <laughs> or one might think intuitively, because when you do very abstract stuff, uh, in some sense, it's hard to be deep. Uh, when, but in fact, for me, uh, this is really the challenge uh, that I, I set it to myself. I mean, to try to do work that is both abstract and deep. And in fact, uh, Topos Theory offered me tools uh, to achieve this goal, and I'm uh, the more uh, and more convinced about uh, uh, its uh, fantastic qualities as a subject, uh, which is interdisciplinary mathematics, very general, but also very deep, uh, in the sense that it can uh, uh, make you see things that would be really invisible otherwise. So the methods of Topos Theory allow you to prove, uh, sometimes in a very quick and easy way things that uh, when you look at them from other perspective they look completely obscure you just don't have uh, any clue and uh, so i find that this extremely fascinating and uh, so i could say that um, in some sense I, I fell in love with the subject almost immediately when i uh, when i started learning about that it was this feeling of depth and uh, of generality was there from the very beginning and then I went on and of course <laughs> I tried to get my work more and more sophisticated but uh, always with the same aspiration. Okay, and uh, Thierry? Yes, so, I, uh, <coughs> um, so I, I was working in constructive mathematics and I wanted to understand some uh, papers of André Joyal that was about topos theory but uh, the, I I was unable to understand them, and uh, it really uh, start. I really started to understand them when, so uh, constructive mathematician, so Henri Lombardi, he explained to me this idea of uh, dynamical algebra. So people that were uh, doing computer algebra that wanted to compute with algebraic numbers, and uh, but we, uh, without being able to uh, decide if a polynomial was irreducible or not, and they were still able to compute with algebraic number and uh, with a very uh, um, algorithmically very interesting ideas so this idea of lazy computation I mean, to be uh, lazy and uh, so th this was a really nice uh, idea and then i realized actually that uh, that was what andre joyal was was doing but in this formalism of topos theory and that's really where i started to do uh, to understand actually topos theory and how it can be relevant for computation Okay, good. I mean, in your presentation, nobody made the differences between topoi, toposes, uh, uh, topos. It's a huge so, <laughs> huge controversy. It's a huge controversy. So, so, at the end, uh, what, what is the common uh, use? Uh, it, it really depends on the authors. So, okay. Well, so you can I use was influenced by my own uh, supervisor, British man, and uh, so. Toposis. Toposis. But okay. uh, some other authors, very distinguished authors, including uh, Jacob Lurie, uh, 
uh, gick mål att det är det just toppoj. Så so, I mean everything is acceptable, uh, I think. So. Okay, so th this goes down now back uh, back to Daniel. Um, very good presentation on uh, toposis and information. Um, and it goes back to my question, which I wanted to ask you before: is uh, we have the feeling that the, the topos framework revisits many of the concepts we knew, and what can it bring new besides just revisiting and having a new interpretation of, of basically information? Yes. In the case, and let's take the example of information. In, in this case of the uh, information quantity, yes. uh, the uh, first thing it can uh, uh, give new is if there is a higher, higher uh, degree quantity. Yeah. Because uh, you, you have a, a cohomology theory. Yeah. So here we can identify, identify rather easily uh, the uh, one dimensional, okay. but the higher dimensional okay, could also be interesting. He okay. could say that we have looked for, at this moment, for uh, invariant of one uh, random variable okay, uh, under some uh, probabilistic model, okay. but it could happen that you have uh, invariants which appear only if you look at, uh, for example, three variable together, okay, or in some or, or order. Okay. And uh, we, we could be not definable for uh, individual uh, measurement, okay, because they, they, they look at a configuration okay, already of uh, three variable. Okay. That's one, uh, one hope. Okay. It, uh, and, uh, here it's more uh, this point of view of cohomology. Okay. And also, it, it can be the starting point to um, examine the relation between this, uh, for example, quant these quantities. Okay. For example, you can integrate what is was asked uh, uh, energy. So you have this, uh, mm -hmm. what is called beta, beta energy, which could probably be also uh, uh, interpreted uh, homologically uh, in, a, in a context here. And in this case, yes, I know that. Uh, one year, six, six months, here we've been working with another student, which is only the pet, okay, that uh, this uh, algorithm we speak, which is, uh, um, which is important in uh, machine learning and information, the uh, belief propagation, okay, uh, has a cohomological interpretation, but in a, in, with a different complex. Okay. In fact, it's the first time I see. You have one linear complex, which is like D star, and you have a D, which is uh, non-linear, and satisfied this point. And if you combine both, uh, you, you have a kind of uh, heat operator. And this flow is uh, the heat flow for this operator, which is discrete. And uh, that is the uh, interpretation. It is a discrete uh, version of uh, uh, heat equation in this situation uh, of uh, what is called uh, graph uh, com com complex. Uh, uh, Belief propagation, yes. The term that uh, uh, graph factor. Graph factor. Uh, the, the generic name is graph graph factor. Yeah. So probably it's because you have uh, this uh, structure of kind of uh, topos uh, or relation between topos that you could hope to to see this kind of. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I had the intention to make the citation of uh, it was a, the text of by cited by uh, uh, or seen by. Cotendic and Verdier, telling that, in some sense, uh, every time you, 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 you will have some notion of locality, uh, uh, underlying uh, kind of form, uh, you, you could have a topos. So, in some sense, uh, our problem is, do information as a form? Okay. That's but what as a form of, uh, uh, of uh, in information? Like, uh, uh, I discussed on that with person coming from Gestalt theory. Okay. And he hoped that yeah, the, 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 the figure, for example, which are pregnant in Gestalt, okay, could be uh, uh, related to this kind of form. So. Other comments on what can it bring more than just revisiting uh, uh, concepts uh, that we knew? Well, uh, yes, of course, <laughs> it can bring a lot, <laughs> not just a little. So, no, in fact, the, the point of view that uh, Topos is offer is uh, really different from uh, that of uh, any 
particular field uh, to which it is applied uh, because it is, uh, I mean, I personally regard it as a meta-mathematical subject in the sense that uh, you see, thanks to toposes, you, you have this uh, incredible dynamics uh, of uh, investigation, so you can switch from one mathematical theory inside a given domain to another domain, a completely different context. You can make uh, all sorts of bridges and uh, any topos supports an infinite <laughs> number of bridges. So you see it's, um, and uh, when, you, when you do these bridges, you realize uh, um, a posteriori, when you get the results, uh, I mean, it's always a good exercise to ask yourself, uh, could I uh, have obtained these results without toposis? Uh, and I always pose myself this question, and the answer is, uh, even with the simplest invariance, very often you are not able to find the direct proofs of these results. So I have uh, made a collection of uh, some of these main applications in my, in my uh, habilitation thesis, so one can read uh, about this. It gives also an idea of the generality of the notion of topos because there are applications in different uh, mathematical areas. And in fact, um, when, they the, when the, um, the results are uh, uh, relatively non-trivial in the sense that one starts with uh, a Morita equivalence which is non-trivial and one considers an invariant that is just not uh, the simplest possible invariant, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, uh, one often gets results that uh, cannot be achieved otherwise. And in fact, it's not just uh, that uh, once you get the result, uh, there isn't or there is a proof. It's not just that. It's the creative power of toposes themselves, which I find uh, very striking. The fact that they guide your mathematical investigations. They make you understand, for instance, if a concept that you have introduced is, in some sense, modular. Um, modular in the sense that it is uh, possibly transferable to other contexts. In the sense that, you see, if you are able to identify a topos and an invariant on this topos, which uh, corresponds to the problem you are interested in uh, or to the notion you want to investigate. This is an indication of the fact that in some sense you are on the right track, that uh, your notion is good in a sense, because it comes from, uh, from a center, it's, it is not a marginal notion. Uh, so you see, uh, sometimes um, one uh, can be lost uh, in introducing new notions and um, uh, or um, sometimes one introduces things uh, which are not very canonical. When you let yourself be inspired by toposis, uh, you, you make quite intelligent choices if you are able to uh, hear the voice of things, uh, as Grotendieck was, <laughs> was saying. I mean, uh, you, in some sense you have to to develop a certain sensitivity uh, to, uh, to, to, to understand what the topos suggests to you, but uh, once you get to that level of expertise, you realize that uh, the, the, the input they can provide is invaluable, really. Okay. Thierry, any comments on this? Uh, no, no. Uh, maybe, I mean, only... I mean, the fact that uh, so topos theory is connected to intuitionistic logic. Topos theory comes really from uh, geometry, algebraic geometry. The fact that it is connected to intuitionistic logic and uh, intuitionistic logic is connected to computation is, I mean, something that we have not understood yet. I mean, why, how come that, I mean, Grothendieck came to intuitionistic logic. That's, uh, <laughs> he was not interested in logic. He, uh, that's really surprising. And uh, I think, I mean, there will be more. Uh, connection with computation in this way, which are deep, which are uh, not yet understood, I think. Okay. This will bring something. I mean, coming back to Grothendieck, is, is it true that there are many things still that we cannot read from his papers? From the whole number for Grothendieck? Yes. Many, uh, the newly discovered ones? Yes. Uh, from the whole amount that he wrote, there are still things that we're not we, we still need to discover on what you wrote. Is it still the case? Well, uh, as far as I know, uh, they are not uh, publicly available yet. I mean, all these uh, very late writings. Okay. That, uh, but maybe Emmanuel will uh, be able to say something more about that. I mean, I'm so not I aware. I mean, there, is, there are two parts. There is one part who, who was given to Montpellier, mm. and they are now available. Uh, mm. So they have been numerized, and you can access to the document. But 
They are not so easy to read even formally because uh, they can be hand handwritten and uh, so. But um, yeah, in fact, I tried myself to read one of these, but uh, the yeah, the but writing was very very little. Uh, inside these documents, there were some who was already uh, who already circulated uh, among the community, and then you have s the so-called Lasser documents, which are seventy thousand pages. Yeah, but very with few mathematics, or few, uh, it's uh, more related to the questions of uh, good and evil and okay <coughs> okay yeah, uh, but with his still his mind and okay and we are not available from your presentation we have the feeling that uh, the topos is is like uh, the the theory of everything uh, 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 la théorie du tout <laughs> you, with, with Topo, at least uh, uh, that's how Laurent Lafort convinced me the first time uh, <laughs> <laughs> in, in telling me with, with, with Topos, uh, uh, well, just like 5G, by the way, is the theory <laughs> <laughs> is the theory of everything. In 5G, you put everything. My, my question is, what are the big challenges now do we have in terms of, of doing research in Topos from your point of view, each one of you? Uh, maybe Daniel, or what, what are the big challenges now in Topos? That you, you answer because I'm not really a specialist uh, of topos. Or what do you think uh, we should I do? Think, I think yes, from uh, this uh, thing which mix uh, this uh, uh, point of view coming from algebraic geometry, that the fact that you look at sheets by other side, okay. and uh, this uh, lo, lo, lo intuitionistic, intuitionist uh, logic, uh, the fact that, for example, you can try to understand. Uh, more classical objects. Okay. There are, for example, uh, a geometry. That is, a geometry was traditionally thought, okay, as I said, that you have a group okay, and you have a subset of uh, subgroups which are conjugated doing something. If you now do that in the context of topos, what it is? Okay. Uh, if you do, um, you consider manifolds, okay, and now you, you try to make Riemannian, um, the study of Riemannian manifolds, for example, or, or contact structure. Okay. In this setting, uh, that is uh, so that it makes uh, the uh, advantage of the, uh, this logic that you, you you don't know exactly where you are. It depends on the time, okay? uh, and you, you can be more precise. You can have a manifold, for example, which is fiber over uh, another one, and when you don't see it is the vibration, you have a space of uh, four dimension. But when you look at the fiber, it has ten dimension, for example. Or or eleven, okay. and uh, th that I think for me it's uh, interesting to, to try to do that, or to if somebody do uh, does, does that, okay, that to to integrate the fact that in some sense you have a larger um, scope than set, okay. that you triplets uh, set, and you look at uh, usual uh, traditional differential geometry, for example, in this context. Good, Jean Claude, you have. Uh I know your answer. A book of, on uh, topos for dummies. <laughs> That's the big thing that needs to be done. <laughs> Maybe because it's, uh, it looks uh, really fantastic, and uh, the problem is that it's, the problem is not that it's uh, so difficult. I think the problem is that uh, we, when uh, the new buyers like me uh, try to read something uh, about it, in fact, uh, we immediately realize that we cannot read anymore. And that's uh, the big thing. And uh, we need probably to develop uh, some reading uh, uh, skills for that, uh, specializing this, yeah. Maybe it comes from categories, I don't know. Olivia, the challenges of... Yeah, of I think the, challenge, the big challenge is actually, as I was suggesting, to make the, the theory more user-friendly and to apply it. Because, uh, of course, uh, ideally, I think progress in mathematics should be... Um, uh, motivated by applications, uh, but uh, should also be systematic at the theoretical level. Uh, especially when uh, you work in subjects such as topos theory, I think it is important to have a systematic mind when you do research, um, uh, so not to be too preoccupied by, um, by applications, but also not to neglect them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to um, have a good uh, balance between the two, uh, the two aspects. 
And uh, of course, um, uh, there is a lot to do in connection with uh, the development of the unifying power of toposes in mathematics. Uh, uh, so, um, in fact, um, uh, I was mentioning after my talk about this idea of the encyclopedia of invariants and their characterization. This uh, would be actually very important because it would help the working mathematician identify good toposes and um, good invariants which relate to the, to the questions he is interested in. Uh, of course, it takes time, it takes uh, some investment, uh, and uh, it uh, requires also the existence of, um, of a community, at the beginning small, but uh, hopefully <laughs> uh, larger and larger, uh, works on that. And topos theory has been a, quite a controversial subject in the, in the past 40 years. Uh, I mean, it has been um, uh, very much used in algebraic geometry, especially as far as uh, cohomology is concerned. Uh, also, in homotopy theory, there are have been many developments, uh, including the theory of higher toposes. Uh, so uh, there have been some directions in which research has, um, has advanced uh, very well, uh, especially in relationship with uh, solutions to specific problems. Even though still at the theoretical level, uh, there remains fundamental problems also concerning the cohomological formalism. I mentioned the, uh, the, the issue of the six operation formalism that is still waiting for a unified topos theoretic treatment, uh, which uh, allows one to recover all the special cases known in the literature. Um, so this is also a quite, um, quite interesting uh, uh, challenge. Uh, so, um, yeah, th there are uh, many, many, many things to, to do, uh, both theoretically and uh, from the point of view of applications. One uh, um, uh, research field uh, within uh, topos theory that uh, I hope to, to, to contribute uh, myself to uh, in the next years is uh, the functorial development of uh, model theory. Uh, so, because as I mentioned, the classifying toposes allow one to go beyond the, the study of set-based models of theories by replacing the study of these models with the study of the classifying topos and the universal model inside it, because after all, this generates everything which happens in the set theoretic world. So, it is clear, uh, just by definition of the classifying topos, uh, that um, uh, this perspective is liable to bring uh, a lot of insights uh, and results in, uh, in, in model theory. So it would be very interesting to pursue that line of research and uh, reshape the foundations of model theory uh, by using a, a topos theoretic um, outlook. Uh, more in general, I think that uh, what it would be very good to have is uh, a very open mind um, uh, on the part of uh, specialists in different fields to talk with uh, topos theorists and try to establish a common ground. Because the most interesting applications arise when there is this uh, communication no. uh, between the specialists uh, um, of the area, which of course have uh, uh, the, the best sensitivity possible for the field. And on the other hand, the topos theorists that can bring this uh, completely novel insights uh, uh, so, um, something which I have noticed in the past years is that sometimes uh, communities are a bit close-minded and they are not always uh, open to, to talk to uh, category theorists <coughs> and uh, even worse, topos theorists, uh, because they are a bit scared, it must be said, the language is uh, not very easy to master at the beginning, so I, I understand that there can be resistances, but uh, uh, people should be aware that uh, um, really it's worth to, to do such an investment. Uh, results will come, but one has to um, think in a long-term way, as uh, Grothendieck was uh, was thinking, I mean, he has always uh, promoted uh, mathematics, uh, the, a very systematic development of mathematics, and uh, uh, topos theory is a subject that uh, certainly uh, deserves uh, a systematic development, uh, also in relationship with applications. So, so we hope that uh, uh, more and more specialists from different fields of mathematics will get in contact with uh, people uh, with uh, topos theoretic training, and that this will stimulate uh, more and more uh, results. Okay, that's what we try to do here. Yeah. 
Uh, maybe Daniel, and then I'll give you once more. Just to make a remark on the context where you, why uh, starting from algebraic geometry, it comes to logic. In fact, the, the movement was uh, begin before, okay, for example, with MacLean, Eilenberg, okay, and Cardan, which uh, introduced category theory, okay, and uh, where they were motivated by algebraic uh, topology, and uh, of course, uh, the interplay between algebraic topology and uh, uh, algebraic geometry or so, uh, or number theory. Okay. And so, topos okay, are inscribed in that. Okay. So, why, why, for example, uh, it is already in, in SGR4, the theorem that you have this equivalence okay, between uh, some uh, uh, category having tel such and such property. Of course, it was not uh, developed in the model setting, but it was uh, developed in the just in the term of property of a category, okay? to have a limit, uh, an inverse limit, and so on, okay? is equivalent to be such category, because this uh, people, uh, this group, was uh, very um, uh, interested by all the categorical uh, aspects. Okay? So to, to, to develop category theory, they were aware that it is changing mathematics. Okay? And uh, now it, it's evident that logic okay, uh, is becoming very uh, influenced by uh, category also. So this, this is uh, at a larger, uh, larger level. So top topos is not participate to, to this uh, la larger uh, uh, modification of uh, mathematics. Okay. Thierry, maybe? Uh, yeah, no, nothing to add to what uh, to Olivia said. Uh, I was thinking the same. Everything? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have a la last question, and then maybe I'll ask the people here if they have some questions. It's about implementing topos and programming topos uh, uh, from, from, a, from a, an engineering point yeah. of view. Um, I mean, when you, when you read to, uh, papers of topos, of course, you're quite surprised because there's only arrows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not the classical type of, of mathematical paper that you would read, obviously. It's... it's yeah. You need to get. And the question is that, do you think the actual platform of programming and language we have are tailored to be able to use topos from an engineering point of view in the way we program? Do we need a specific language for, for programming topos? Uh, Daniel, maybe, I don't know if you have a point of view on that. Yeah, uh, just uh, 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 you can find the libraries in uh, Python or Sage, which apparently work uh, pretty well. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can uh, do topos, but as it is a category, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> if, uh, yeah. I mean, there is this uh, notion of functional programming. I mean, it's a language like uh, Haskell or uh, Camel. Or Camel. Okay. And there, I mean, they are, they are already using ideas from uh, category theory. Okay. Like the idea of monad is very important to actually represent side effect or uh, computation with side effect. It's really uh, nicely captured by the theoretical so idea of monads. So there are people already using ideas from category theory. And uh, so functional programming is not too far from. Uh, from the way topos are, are, are done. Okay, so maybe I can I can uh, give the uh, the speech to the people over here. Are there questions around uh, topos that uh, were not so clear before? Uh, okay, I think uh, uh, w it was that was nearly the time I wanted. Thirty five minutes, forty minutes. Uh, I'd like to thank you again for, uh, for your, your excellent presentations. Um, I think you'll be on YouTube, you have to know, <laughs> as far as I know. <laughs> so it's even a, a better, I would say, advertisement of the disciplines on which you're working. And I hope we'll have all more chances to uh, interact and collaborate with you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.